Hey guys, it's Bill from Blenderbrit. Uh, here with something a little bit different today. Uh, rather than a tutorial, I've released a tool to assist with compositing, uh, and I figured I'd make a video to to talk you through the usage of it. Now, this is mainly ge geared at newer users or more experienced users that either have issues with compositing or just hate going through the steps of it um, and, and want something to to speed up the process. So. First of all, I'm going to jump to the compositing pane. We're going to assume that you've made a render here. Um, I, I've rendered off a couple of scenes, uh, one from a tutorial I'm working on, and this one, this classroom one, is a demo file from uh, uh, Blender.org. Um, it's in a completely non-composited state. So if I add in a viewer node like so, I'm going to connect my render into the composite and the viewer node. And then the way I've got this set up is this image on the left will be our reference. So it's the pre-composite version. And then on the right will be what's going on with our compositing. So we can see the difference there. You can turn on backdrop um, and have the nodes over the image, which is actually how I normally work. But I figured for the tutorial, it looks a bit neater to do it this way. So let's say we're at this stage. Yeah, you've got your render connected to your viewer channel, and it's time to start compositing. Two things we need to do first. We need to bring in this, this node group that I've already got, the Quick Compositor, uh, that hopefully you've already downloaded. The way you would then bring it into your scene is to go File, Append, locate the file, which will be called quickcompositor.blend. Uh, I think I haven't named it that yet on mine. Um, but yeah, quickcompositor.blend, go to uh, Node Tree, and then Quick Compositor. It will also bring in these four uh, QC node groups, don't worry about those, they're just the, the internal uh, groups within Quick Compositor. So uh, click append to bring that in and then you'll be able to click add group Quick Compositor and you'll have this. Uh, by default it's completely off, all, all, all of the features that it can do are switched off so you can bring them in one at a time and adjust them as needed. But before we get started, there's a few things you will need to do to your render prior to rendering if you want to make use of all the features um, that this supports, uh, which is namely ambient occlusion, mist, and an emission pass. pass sorry. Uh, there may well be other features uh, in, in the future. I, if I do add to it, I doubt I'll do another video. Um, but certainly at, at this stage, it's just those three. The way you do that, um, and I would strongly recommend looking up some proper tutorials on each one, um, but as a as a quick idea, you'd need to go to your render layers here, turn on your mist pass, ambient occlusion, and emission, and then a few settings you can adjust in here in the uh, scene panel. Uh, no, sorry, you want the world panel. You've got your uh, distance for the ambient occlusion and distance for the mist. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail of what they do, in fact I'm going to go into none at all because um, there's, there's much more in-depth tutorials out there uh, but they're where you would adjust the figures. Once you've got those passes uh, enabled, run your render and then your render image will have the passes listed here so you can use them with the Quick Compositor. Anyway, let's see what this does. So I'm going to drop the Quick Compositor in there and then you can see it's going straight into the render pass and then the output is going both into the compositor and the viewer. So we've got the image there. So let's connect up the other things first of all. So we want the ambient occlusion pass into the aero pass, the mist into the mist and the emission into the emission. Nice and simple. Once they're all connected we can now start taking a look at this. But before I do, um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. First of all, I, I couldn't get all of the controls into this, this front panel. It's just, uh, if there is a way to do it, it's uh, b beyond my knowledge at the moment. But what I have done, if you press tab on the uh, quick composite node, it opens up uh, and it's quite color coded, which I'm hoping will assist. Um, anything minimized in general means leave alone unless you uh, really know what you're doing. And if you do know what you're doing, chances are you won't be using this. Um, so yeah, if it's minimized, leave it alone. If it's orange, it means you can tab into it for further controls, and blue is something that you can edit directly without causing any issues. Um, namely, the, the big one was all of the color control adjustments for, for the color balancing, hue and saturation, brightness and contrast. Um, I decided not to connect those 
to the outside so we could keep all the color related stuff together and that's all there one tab in um, if you want to make minor adjustments to bloom you've got some you, you've got some controls there same with the emission bloom and also the vignette controls okay so now we've uh, covered that let's get back to where we were and now I'm going to show you what these are uh, these bits and bobs do so first you've got the background image slash color um, if you've got a scene where you want to put in a backdrop make sure the size has been adjusted beforehand to match your render drop it in there and it will just appear as a backdrop uh, where wherever the uh, alpha area is within your scene or you can just set it as a color like here um, you can see the alpha in the window so if I change the background color to something crazy so we can see it like a big pink give it a second to composite and you can see the background's now pink. Obviously we don't want to keep that. We're going to go for sort of a sunset light outside. So I'm going to set it to a bit of an orange. Maybe take the brightness down a little bit. Uh, maybe up a little bit. Yeah, that should do fine. Should really use a background image here, but for, for quick mucking about, that's fine. Next control is the sharpen amount. Um, sometimes to bring you textures out you just want to sharpen it up just a little bit normally a figure of like 0 0.05 is fine um, but I'm going to do one so I can show you the, the sort of extreme of what the uh, what the control is doing way too sharp down there <laughs> doesn't look very good um, but have a play with that and get the amount where you want it as I said 0.05 is normally a, a nice number ambient occlusion uh, again I'll whack that up to one so we can see exactly what it's doing it's bringing in the uh, ambient occlusion pass way too much really darking up the image there but if you give it a figure of about 0.1 um, that's usually a good starting point and then you can adjust from there mist control basically the color of the mist will be decided by the color and the strength of the mist by the brightness so let's turn the brightness way up to start with now remember this will only work if the mist pass is connected and if you've enabled mist in the render settings um, way too much mist there obviously but let's get the color right again we're gonna go for that slight orangey sort of color perfect and now let's bring the mist down to about there yeah it's a nice little hint of it is all you want especially on an internal scene um, so that should work pretty nice now the bloom controls that will adjoin uh, um, that will uh, add in sort of generic bloom uh, to the entire scene and if I hit that to one you'll see what I mean so all the brighter areas get a nice glow around them you could even go beyond one hit five and go really over the top way over the top uh, but typically uh, something like a point three or four will work for a lot of scenes it's a nice little touch of it there like that um, now the emission um, we'll just take the emission pass and do the same thing um, I'll demonstrate by going massively over the top with five and you can see the lights here which are our emission bits are getting loads of bloom on them way way too much um, but so you can see what it was doing uh, that's why we would put it up high I'm talking rubbish now to apologize so let's set that to about 0.5 and that should give the lights on the ceiling there a nice little glow like so good good um, lens distortion You've got two figures distort and dispersion dispersion is that effect where at the edges the color tends to separate um, don't go overboard with that it's a uh, it's something a lot of artists do um, when they're starting out with with compositing and um, because it's a cool looking feature it was really popular a few years ago it, practically every render would have it but <laughs> um, so yeah lens distortion one first of all so we can see what it's doing and it's distorting the lens quite crazily so let's go for a 0 0.01 yeah nice just a nice subtle effect and then for lens dispersion we're going to go to stupid low 0 0.0075 and even that might be too high uh, no that looks pretty good and then the final control on here is the vignette so let's turn that up to one first of all so we can see what it's doing and well, there you go you see what it's doing <laughs> um, that's it at full power obviously you wouldn't want to use it like that now the softness control is blur blurs these black corners um, so if I take it all the way up to one 
very very soft vignette if I take it to like 0.75 slightly more defined one it, but yeah yeah you get the idea you would not leave the amount at one though let's try that out about a 0.7 nice so just slightly uh, uh slight vignette there to to draw the viewer into your image I mean even, even already you know, comparing the uh, original render here with the composited image um it, it, it's already clear uh, the the differences well, at least it is to me <laughs> um and then the final controls uh, that I'm going to cover today are the color ones. So as I explained before, tab into the Quick Compositor. You've got your three controls here. Uh, the main ones we're going to look at are the color balance ones. So let's go for, I don't know, just to show an extreme. I'm going to go for a really desaturated, bluey sort of uh, image. I'm sure there's a better term for it than that, but you'll see what I mean. So let's go 0.65 for saturation. That will drain a lot of the color out of it. Perfect. And then on both the midtones and the highlights, I'm going to go blue, which isn't something you normally do too often. But for this sort of washed out effect, it should be quite nice. Give it a set to catch up. Yeah, yeah, that looks quite nice. So you can really do quite a lot of, uh, to your image um, from just this. What you can also do um, is add features to this. At this point here, this uh, line that goes from the render result into the render pass, you can add in additional nodes there, like if you wanted to add in a lens flare or what, whatever other compositing uh, tasks you've got, put them in prior to the render pass, and in most cases, it will still work perfectly fine with these being added on afterwards. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it as far as that goes. Just to show you how um, it affects different renders though, let's let's plug it into the other one that I've got here. So I'm gonna hold down control, draw through the nodes there and that'll cut them all off. And we'll get rid of that one. I'm gonna change this to this scene here. Now this is a scene that's not quite finished yet. Um, it's one I'm working on for a future tutorial. Something to look forward to there. Um, but I thought it was a good scene to, to try this out with. So let's connect it up again. Connect to the render pass, the ambient occlusion, the mist, and the emission. I just remembered actually why I wanted to include this one. Um, it's because I'm going to add in a couple of things prior to the quick compositor, like I was just talking about. So, with the default settings there, um, it's not what I'm after at all. So, let's change this around a little bit. Um, I'm going to whack up the mist to max so I can see what it's doing and give it a slight orangey tone because that's the way I'm going to go with the scene again. Way too high, uh, but at least we can see what it's doing. So let's bring the mist down a little bit to maybe there. Wait for it to catch up. Yep, yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'll, I'll leave these as they are. Um, these, these, these settings I've got here are a, a nice sort of starting point. Um, background image isn't doing anything because there's no alpha channel uh, on this render. Tab into here and I'm going to go quite orangey here. And just a little touch of blue in the highlights and saturate it up a little bit to about 8. Kind of look at that, kind of that old film camera sort of look-ish. Anyway, um, you, you'd spend more time than just quickly adjusting like I did there but it will do for purposes now let's say you wanted to as I was saying you want to add in a feature um, I want there to be a glow where the sky meets the trees here so I'm going to quickly do that by I've got an environment pass here if I bring the viewer node down connect the environment pass to the viewer and um, basically anything you've got in the HDR um, is what's included in the render pass and everything else is blacked out so that's perfect for what we're doing anyway and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a glare node, change it to fog glow, change it up a bit. Yes, a bit extreme. Oh, let's bring the threshold down. So the brighter parts of the sky are now creating a little bit of glow. Yeah, that's quite nice. So now we've got this, I'm going to add that into the combined image. 
And from mix node that I change to add, drop the glare into there, connect that to the viewer node, and we should have our base render but we have a glow around the trees. And then if I connect, connect the viewer node back to the uh, endpoint there, it will then take that and add in the rest of the compositing. Bam, not too bad. Now, um, one thing I would want to fix up here is because of the mist factor and the glows, we pretty much lost our background, um, which is easy enough to fix. Um, but I'm not going to do it just now because that's not really the point of this, is it? Anyway, I hope you make good use of this tool. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you notice any issues with it, that's something that's not working the way it should be, or think of a feature that you'd like to see in it, please leave a comment either under the video or on my uh, website with the download link, um, and I'll and I'll take a look. Um, got a, a, a good couple of tutorials coming up. We've got this one on the uh, jetty scene. Um, once I've got it completed, that's going to be quite a long one. Pretty much going to cover everything we see there in the image, so that'll be fun. Um, and I'm also starting up a, a starter series uh, for people that are either coming back to Blender or, or are really, really new to it. Um, so that should be quite good too. Uh, but for now, goodbye and thanks for watching.